everybody, it's your pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences bringing you another episode of Monday Minutes. Today I'm going to prove to you, against my better judgment, that the uh, random effects generator could possibly maybe sort of, if you know kind of sort of what you're gonna do with a little patience, be okay to try. I can't believe I just said that. I think I threw up a little bit in my mouth. Okay, all joking aside, uh, I wanted to bring to light, pun intended, that uh, there are useful tools in x Lights that even I don't always think about, but I had a dream last night and it wasn't about x Lights, but it made me think that sometimes just because you don't think it works doesn't mean that's the end all be all. So I spent a little bit of time this morning playing around with this, and I wanted to combine this with some of the newer features of the preset effects that have been updated, and also share some maybe possibly interesting ideas to consider for the devs to make the preset effects just a tiny little bit better in the organizational side. They have added some organizational components to it, which are great. I think it's a stepping stone. But I think it can be made even better uh, for people like me who have a ton of presets. The challenge is I don't use a lot of my presets all that much uh, because I enjoy creating from scratch. And today we're going to create some effects from scratch, but we're going to allow the X Lights effects auto generator to give it its best shot. But I'm going to show you some tips to setting this up. Does it make any sense to have the text effect on in the auto generator? No, probably not. There's many, there are many effects that you should just turn off. So I'm going to show you how to turn these off and how to get the best bang for the buck for your time when using the auto effect generator, blah, 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 in x Lite, and then show you some tips and tricks for uh, making some great use of your time when putting these effects. Now, could you just randomly grab effects? Sure, well, that's sort of what I do. I, when I'm cooking from scratch in a sequence, absolutely what I do. But I wanna show you this as perhaps a way that you might be able to stir up some of that inner creativity. All right, let's get started. Um, let's get started with this. Make sure you smash that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so kindly for your time and I'm so glad you're here. Let's get into the preferences first before we start getting into presets and we start getting into the auto generation of effects from X Lights. Let's first tame this beast. Here we go. X Lights. Preferences. And the preferences are hidden once again. Okay. Oh, so so my, my first request, and I think this is maybe on the Mac side, could we possibly please maybe sort of kind of with sugar on top have this uh, dockable? Because right now uh, this doesn't dock. And for whatever reason, on the Mac, it sort of just, it will disappear behind this window and other windows. So you have to go hunt for it. You may see that a few times here. Anyway, let's get to the random effects. And as you can see here, I've turned off, I don't know, 85% of the possible effects possible in X lights. I don't think the use of faces, fireworks, guitar lines, maybe not even morph. Uh, now, if you Clyde Lindsay, you're going to leave morph on because he loves that puppy. He loves that effect. And he's very, very good with it. Uh, it's not my favorite effect, probably because uh, I, I suck with it. Yeah, there we go. Um, Galaxy, Kaleidoscope, Liquid Effects, some of these aren't really going to help you learn to sequence because the, the reason behind this is I want you to put some effects on there and start playing with layer and layer blender and render styles. Okay, because you're going to see here in a moment when you place random effects through X lights, they don't really do anything for you. They take the colors you have. There's no layer blending. There's no render settings. So... What good is it? It's useless until you do something about it. And I'm just going to teach you how to do that. So anyway, turn off the things that you don't think you're going to need. Now, why did I turn off the U meter? That's such a doggone good effect. Well, because I don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> the U meter has a subset of effects. So you're better off leaving it off and putting it on with intent. Okay. 
So I'm going to get out of here. I'm done with that. So our first step in trying to create a masterful effect, and I'm just going to do this on the Dragon Cluster group. I also have Dirty Sanchez and Shameful. I don't know what I was taking that night. It might have been NyQuil. Don't ask me why I name these things like I do. I, well, there's reasons behind all of them, but they're funny and, uh, you know, it wouldn't mean anything to anybody else. So to use the random effects in X-Lights, you'd simply click a layer, a section. I would have timings if I were you. You can click all three. Let's roll the dice. Right click. A not effects preset. Create random effects. Ugh. Okay, do we have to do this? I guess we do. Okay, we're committed now. Here we go. Oh, well, we got Luki. We got a pinwheel. A pinwheel's a good one to start with. And right now, this must be a Halloween sequence. I got a little strobe effect going on, and it looks okay. Now, this one happens to be a uh, wash, and this one happens to be another color wash. So I'm sort of not digging that one. Maybe what I'm going to do is grab this section and let's try to create another random effect. Okay, bars. Fair enough. So I can work with this. Now, right off the bat, this is a little unfair because I was playing with this before. Typically, what you're going to see, depending on how x is set up, is these are going to be set on default. I threw these in at the group layer, level. Group, right? Okay. The crusher group is a group. So now when I put this at the default, which is what you may have, what I want you to do if you're at the group level, depending on whether it is a native or custom model, and you might have seen these videos before, I'm not going to go real deep into that. I would go ahead and select all these, right click on your render style, right click, bulk edit. Let's change these all for now to overlay centered. And then we get this. Now, a good practice is to isolate these, scoot these over and see what they each do. So what does this do? Well, not a whole lot, not a whole lot. It's using a lot of colors and it's bouncing between. So I don't even know if we'll keep that, but we're going to hold on to it. This one happens to be uh, a color wash and they're moving pretty fast. Looks like this was stuck on horizontal fade. Maybe I'll leave it on horizontal fade. That's not so bad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump this up to the top here. I'm going to move this one out of the way because I know with these colors, I could probably do something interesting with the pinwheel. Okay. So with the pinwheel, if we look at it by itself, we can see it's sort of doing some interesting things. Maybe we like it. Maybe we don't. Maybe you could try another render style. I don't know, like vertical per model per preview. Whoa, holy moly, what is it doing? It's out of control. You could try a whole bunch of these, but I would stick to the main ones. Uh, you put on a uh, per model per preview, you're going to have sort of what it thinks it's doing based on the buffer with all of it. And so far, I kind of dig this. I think this is kind of cool. What I might do is thicken this up just a little bit, make it a little more pronounced, maybe put a little 3D in there, thicken it up some more. That's looking cool. And then what I may do is drag this over here because I'm getting all these colors, right? And they're bouncing around. Now we can start playing with our layer blendings. And remember, this is set to additive because I was playing before. Normally, you're going to see this set to normal. Eh, and that's kind of boring. And we can go over here to one is mask. Well, that dog didn't hunt. Two is mask. Mm, it's better. One is unmask. Uh, it's not so Halloween-y, is it? Uh, and then we get this. And this is kind of interesting because this is using the effects above it. Two is unmask, allowing these colors to seep through just on the movements. And I kind of like that. And we take this guy here. What is this guy doing? Well, you know, really this isn't doing much at all. So what I might do once again is right click, create random effects. Will we get lucky? Oh man, did we get lucky. So check this out. What is this guy doing? What is this guy doing? Ah, now I do like it. Now it's it's using a lot of these colors. These are new, the new colors that I've picked out for a brand new sequence I'm doing, a Halloween sequence. So if you want to get rid of some of these colors, you can. Maybe make it a little more pronounced. Um, I do like the blue in there. Let's go back to these. There we go. I like those. 
Okay. Again, this is a good time to start checking out some of these other properties that you might use with layer settings per model, per preview. Now that's not going to look good. So I just probably go back to overlay centered. And now what we can do is we know that this is taking the colors from that uh, color wash and using them with the effect of the pinwheel. We can scoot this pinwheel over. Oh, there we go. And now we can start messing with things on the pinwheel. So default or normal looks like that. If we put it on, let's say two is unmasked, we start getting different effects. If we put it on one is true unmask, we start getting different effects. Uh, go down to the bottom, put it on minimum. Hmm, interesting, I'd probably go more with an additive. There we go. Now we can drag this back into place. Now we can scoot this over to the left and maybe, Maybe that is the effect you are looking for. Maybe it's not. Again, you can play around with these. Uh, Pierre created some of these newer ones here. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I like that. I like that. So let's say that you have just created this effect with the help of X Lights randomly putting some things into play for you. But X Lights is not going to turn on your layer blendings. It's not going to randomly select layer blendings, although that would be very cool if X lights could, even if it guessed, would be better than the default of nothing. The same thing would be great in uh, creating random effects if maybe palettes might be chosen, but that, I think that gets a little more complicated and ask, it's asking a little too much. The other one would be layer settings, your per model per preview, that if you drop these effects at the group layer layer that uh, X lights would somehow know to randomly uh, apply render style. So maybe there's a tick box in the uh, area where you are telling it to choose random effects. Maybe you could click a tick box that says yes at, at group level only. And there you go. So this is the effect we love. And let's check out what we can do with these. In case X lights crashed or you lost everything or you were out working on a sequence six months later and you remembered you had this thing called Crusher. This is the, we'll call this Crusher because I think we're crushing it right now. We can save this as a preset with these effects, okay? So all we have to do is select them, right click, okay? And come right down here to Effect Presets. We select that and you're going to have this effects presets window come up and you'll see I have a bunch. So this is the top one effects presets and you'll see there is a ton of stuff here. Now, I think I sort of messed this up because I right clicked in here and I told it to sort by group and I told it to sort all and now it's just basically alphabetical all over the place. What I would love to see is all of these little ones. I'd love to be able to select these, right click, and either add them to an existing group or put them in a new defined group to clean up this. Okay. Uh, the other thing I'd be very careful with, if you have a lot of effects in here, if I select one of these effects, uh, typically you're going to see this window go to go to town, I would probably turn this off in your preferences, okay? Otherwise, if you have a complicated uh, preset with a lot of layers, this thing is gonna sit here and spin trying to show you some square pretty picture of what it does. It will be faster for you just to apply it in X Lights and look at it, play back in live, than waiting for this to uh, render and, and show you a preview of what it's supposed to do. Okay. So here are some of the cool Scooby clues. If I click on this, Brett, that's Brett Foy. Brett Foy created, Brett Foy created something with nine layers. Brett, what did you create with nine layers? I don't even know. There's my old candy squirrel. Oh, look, it's going to try to play something. Don't you dare. What's cool about this is, oh, the other thing would be great is if we had information as to 
how old are these effects? Is there anything that would tell us when these were created? Because that would be interesting for me, because some of this stuff goes way, way back. I mean, 2016. That's how far back. Candy score, Swirl, I think it's 2017. But the Scooby Clues here are, it tells you how many milliseconds long it is. It tells you how many layers are going to be needed when you drop it in. Okay, so that's very important. So this new effect with the three effects on these three layers that I want to put in here, there's a couple of cool things we can do to help organize this that weren't here always forever, but they are now. Uh, we can add group. This has been here for a while. And I'm going to call this Monday uh, Minutes. So that's going to go in a new group. I'm going to take this group and I'm going to put it at the very top because I can. So there's my Monday Minutes. And then what I'm going to do is create a new preset. And I'm going to call this K-R-U-S-E-H-R, S-H-E-R, Crusher. And click OK. And now it puts Crusher at the bottom. That's nice. I think Crusher is supposed to be in that group. So we can drag this. Looks like we, uh, did it, uh, it almost, it almost wants to drag it, but it, oh, it does. It does. Well, that's good. Here's a question. Can I put it in Monday Minute Tutorial? Let's find out. Oh my goodness, Ron, do you have enough of these? Probably. And we're just getting, oh, let's just go to the top of this. Oh, isn't that faster? Now, in my Monday minutes, uh, that's supposed to be a group, but I don't think it is a group. So let's do this again. Uh, let's enter a new group name. Monday minutes effects. Okay, it did do that. Okay, let's try this again. While that is selected, I think this is where I made a mistake. We're going to click new preset. I'm going to call this Crusher 2. Click OK. Ah, oh, that's so much better. So much better. So make sure, don't make the mistake I did by not having the group selected uh, to put something in it. So now I can go up here to my Monday. I can go to my Monday minutes. I can delete this. I can delete the crusher because it looked at both of those as presets, not a group with a preset in it. Now I have my Monday Minutes effects, Crusher 2. It's there. It tells me that it takes three layers and it is 5,000 milliseconds long or five seconds. Boom. There we are. Uh, we can also search for all of these. So if I was looking for candy, click. Uh, I can't hit enter. That's a bummer. Okay, I have to hit search. And there is candy cane. Hit search again. Uh, spinning candy canes. Candy swirl. Candy pop. Candy swirl. Candy cane. Yep, and it just go back over and over. It looks, look, I got something here from Mike. Down oh, wow, that is old. Candy cane. This, oh, yes, the contest. So I used to cut, create uh, presets and then ask people to submit their preset effects to try to mirror what I came up with. That was a lot of fun. All right, so now we can get out of here. I'm going to close out of that. So if I didn't have this effect any longer, maybe I lost the sequence, didn't remember what the effect was. Now I can come in here and I can right click effect presets. And now I can scroll up or search for that Monday minutes, right, which I've had down here at the bottom. Now I could put this at the very top again. Here's my Monday Minutes. Click on the preset effect you would like. Make sure that you have the necessary layers, okay? And then you simply apply. You can't hit OK. Uh, OK doesn't work. You want to hit Apply Preset. And then we can close out of here. And there it is. And there's our preset. It's really that simple. All right. Shall we do another one? <clears throat> Let's go here. Right click. Uh, create random effects. Feeling lucky here. I'm feeling lucky. Mm, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the nice thing is uh, it is keeping all the attributes. Now, the reset panel when changing effects is supposed to reset the attributes of this, but it is holding on to it. And... Uh, also, the layer blending, which is supposed to reset the panel when changing effects, uh, it's holding on to these attributes. 
I don't know if that is supposed to do that, but I would sort of call that a benefit at this point. So again, take these, isolate, make your modifications for color. Scoot that over. What's this one doing? This one, that one's okay. This one, I don't need two of these. So what am I going to do? I'm going to right click. I'm going to tell us create a random effect. Oh no, not you. Please, not you. See, I'm just, I'm giving X lights. Uh, that's fair enough. Fair enough. So if we like this, oh, and that you skips. Ugh. Let's make this longer. Let's take out some of these blues. Let's just make it these colors. Fair enough. And let's give it a 3D fade. Perfect. This guy here. Um, yeah, I could live with that. Although I would probably tell it to close. Let's get this thing to do something. Mm, that's okay. I'm good with that. Uh, curtain edge center. And then let's bring you over. Now keep in mind, uh, these are using two as un two as unmasked. I would probably set these all back to normal so that you can practice. So you'll look at this and say, okay, that well, kind of like that as is. Maybe I'll take this one and do as two as unmask. There we go. There we go. And this one be normal. And maybe we'll do a bounce from right. There we go. Mm hmm Yeah, there we go. I'm liking that. Now, here, here's a fun way to, to break the rules here is to copy this and start putting this in other groups or combinations of groups. So I'm going to paste this. What do we get? That's not so bad. It's not so bad. And then sometimes what you can do is just take all of these Scoot it down with an arrow. Oh, now that's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. I like that. So let's see what that outside edge. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I'm digging that. This guy here. Yeah, let's get you back over there again. And then if I like this, I'll take these. Now, do be careful here. Do, do be careful here. Because now I'm about to take effects that are on two layers of one model and one layer of the other. And you're not going to remember this. Okay. So if we right click on this and we go to our uh, effects presets, there's not really a notes on here. What would be helpful let me put this on Monday Minutes, and I'm going to click New Preset. I'm going to call this uh, Wizzy. Uh, I suppose I could put in here um, two of, and nice thing is we can move this around, to D. Sanchez, I suppose. We could give it some more information. Mm, D Sanchez one uh, shame fall. I think there's a better way. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how many characters this is gonna get upset with you if you use too many. But at least I'd be able to do this so that if I came back into it and I wanted to use this same effect, and I came in here somewhere like this and said, okay, hey. Uh, effects presets. I'm looking for that funky thing I did. And once again, you have gone somewhere else. Really find that slightly annoying. I'm sure it's a victim of it just being the Mac OS. Don't know. So here's my whiz, my whizzy. And at least I have some notes on here. It says do two for D. Sanchez, one shameful, three, okay. In that case, I would know to make sure I have at least two to three layers here. And then I would have um, one for here. And, and that's, that's fair enough, fair enough. So at that point, I could right click, I could click here. Oh my gosh, you are just going to be a dirty Sanchez, aren't you? 
then I can click the apply preset and then we would be off and running the way we were before. Okay, just some things to take in consideration when you're working with presets. Is it perfect? No, no such thing as perfection. It's great and it's wonderful for folks who want to learn to sequence and want to learn how to use layer blending and layer settings. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of pamphlets out there that really cover the bases. You have to have your butt in a seat and practice, 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 and experiment, experiment, experiment. There is no substitution. There just isn't. Uh, the same goes for applying presets and where you're gonna apply them. Uh, you may need to shorten them. You may need to change the length or flow of how many spirals you may have or how fast the effects are, depending on how much of a length of time you're going to be using them. But at least it's something to help the creative juices flow for you, if that's how you operate, uh, to make your sequencing better. Okay, uh, Not really about mapping here. I suppose you could use it for mapping, but uh, you might throw off quite a few things. But for folks that really want to practice the layers and the layer settings, layer blendings, and work with colors, and, and try to understand what these different layer blendings do and render styles, this is a great tool to practice with. So let X Lights give you a little bit of its creativity, which I mean, it's not really being creative, it's randomly pulling stuff down. You have to maximize the creativity. All right. That's all I've got for you. I'm Ron from Extreme Sequences. This has been Monday Minutes. We'll catch you next week.